tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! <laughs> We are back with another episode of the Limitless After Show, guys. Uh, that is the Mission Impossible theme song, as we are undercover this episode for the episode undercover. It's episode 15. Um, so if you guys are joining us, please rate us on YouTube, like us on everything that you listen it to. Uh, give us five stars, right, guys? Yes. Yes, please. Nice. Uh, I'm your host, JB Zimmerman. You can follow me at Hey John Blake. Joining me, the full panel, Amanda. Full panel, Amanda. Find me at Amanda FTA31, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'm Frank Myrano. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Let's Go Frank M. Nice. Let's go, Frank M. Let's go, go Frank M. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, let's dive right into this episode. A lot of secret agents. We get a new agent, sort of. Lucy. I love her. I thought it was great. Lucy Church. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, a nice, powerful female character other than Rebecca. That's exactly. sort of, I mean, aside from Piper, the only other one that, that we've like seen that was like... episodes ago. Uh, well, she, you know what? Really, it's still... It's, it, go ahead. Yeah, it's still playing into what's going on. The action right. that's happening. She's coming back, Amanda. Okay, okay. I'm telling you. Okay. Don't... Don't ruin my dream. I'm not ruining your dreams, <laughs> right. but I liked the new female character. The new female character. Yeah, I mean, we we definitely saw we saw her shoot someone, so there's that. Um, not a whole lot of action. I mean, this is more like setting stuff up. Mm-hmm. A lot of um, things that are happening kind of behind the scenes. It's more like detective work um, as opposed to like procedural action. Right. That right. we've seen before, which is a little bit different. Right. Frank, what, yeah. what did you think? She um, she clearly has some skills as an undercover agent, was the one that Brian couldn't figure out and find right away. So mm-hmm. clearly the implication is that she has some skill and has um, an emotional uh, center that is equivalent to Brian's because he is ultimately pushing to do good and no matter what he endeavors upon. And in the similar way, Lucy fights against her bosses when they tell her to come in when her personal safety is put into danger. So it was interesting to see a character like that come along whom we really haven't seen before. Uh, Now I have my personal thoughts about her, which are are different, but in terms of how she services the plot in this story, I think we are brought along, you know, uh, the female mirror to Brian in a lot of ways. Frank, no, I, that's a really good point. I think you hit the nail right there on the head there. Um, I, I really agree with you in that she is sort of the female version of Brian, where mm-hmm. we haven't really seen someone you know, kind of stick it to their bosses in a way that Brian has. And she did that right off the bat. You know, she started sort of as this recluse character who is already kind of on the outs with her agency. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously she wasn't taking NCT, so she had gotten there in a legitimate way, we can assume. Mm-hmm. But it was still interesting that she was rebellious in a lot of the same ways that Brian was. And I guess that sets them up to be sort of a, um, in theory, compatible match. You know, long term, we may feel differently. I think I do. Um, I don't know if... See you later will happen ever. Uh, I think it was more like a a way for them not to say goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was a way to kind of show that Rebecca got a little bit jealous in there. Especially, no, absolutely. Especially when they asked her, when they were thinking about, when they asked her, like, what did she say? She was like, oh, everyone looks good in a suit. What are you talking about? And then she kind of got a little jealous. So I think... This character was almost helping us show Rebecca what right, was going on. Right, right. It was good helping point. to yeah. further that plot. And to further your point, there was a shot where 
Brian and uh, Lucy had a scene in a moment out at the elevator, and then they cut to Rebecca looking right at away. Them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I saw Over that there at the cube. end. Yeah. Yeah, so she was foreshadowing for sure. Which Team yeah. Brecca is that not? Well, yeah, feeds <laughs> the Brecca ship. Feeds the ship that we've got going on here. I yeah. I thought that, uh, and every love interest that has come along until now for Brian, I have felt like has more has had more chemistry with him than Lucy had with him. I thought the kiss came out of nowhere. It shocked me when it happened. Because up until that point, it seemed very platonic between the two. They were working together. I, I just feel like when you have that sort of chemistry and traction with someone, you sort of have those pauses where you're just kind of looking at each other. Um, and we saw that with um, with uh, Piper. I thought that he had great com- chemistry with her and um, with... Nas's his, daughter. Nas's daughter, Nas's of course, <laughs> my the favorite. The first girlfriend with the short, with the short blonde hair. Yeah, his actual oh, right. girlfriend in real yes. life. Yes. Right. Yes. Who so. is... Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess it's no surprise that there's some chemistry there. Yeah, so as a romantic interest for Brian, I think she is probably the weakest that we have seen so far. But I think Amanda is right in that it showed us some new aspects to Rebecca's feelings about Brian in that they are more than just protective ones. Right. And I feel like her character, you know, Lucy Church was a very... You could tell she's someone that kind of runs off of her impulses. She kind of does what she feels like when she pulls a gun out on that guy. Yeah. Um, she kind of is, she, I don't think she sometimes thinks before she acts. Yeah. So I think when she kissed him, it was just one of those almost rebellious moments where she just goes in for it. And yeah. he, being Brian and being the guy that he is, is like, okay, why not? Let's go undercover and like be <laughs> hookup buddies for a couple of days. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't think it was really like a romantic interest. I think it was just something that happened. Right. But when she's getting in the elevator, you saw him give this big <sighs> sigh. There she goes. I mean, you're right. You saw that, right? Yeah, right. But that's but because I, Brian's such a good guy. No, yeah, I was, like, was going to say. Day, I feel like, you know, he. Yeah, he I kind of chalk that up to Brian just being a romantic. A, yeah. You know, he's romantic just. Guy. He's an artist. He, you know, he's a musician. At the end of the day, he just, you know, he likes he to feels be. With people. Yeah, <laughs> smitten with people. He's feeling the the Valentine's Day. <laughs> and well, I love and I love how he's like he's such a good person. At the end of the day, he's the person telling her to take the gun down. He's the per- he's just yeah. he's always doing right. And it was it's just it amazes me how they have stayed true to keeping him a good person. Yeah, no, throughout he, this entire series, he's uh, the epitome of like a gentle soul. He Sometimes just wants- it annoys me. I'm like, why are you such a good person? <laughs> Yeah. Freaks me out. Yeah, and, I don't believe he's that nice. And I think the the gun scene where she holds up um, oh, Gudmund at gunpoint um, kind of rhymes weirdly, but I thought that was the the breaking point between the two, to where throughout the episode they had seemed like mirrors, but then she took an action that Brian never would. Uh, he would never point a gun at somebody with right. true intent to kill them. Um, that's why we see him struggle so much this episode with remembering the evidence technician and knowing that Mr. Sands, the, the, the implication is heavily so that Mr. Sands took care, you know, that killed the evidence technician and it weighs on him heavily. So I thought that scene for me was the biggest jumping off point where the two of them just will not work out long term right. other than the chemistry issue, which I mentioned before. Right. Not even sexual tension, really. Right. It was there. There were brief, brief moments where just you know, like you're a woman before, and you're a man. Yeah, right, <laughs> right before the kiss. But I don't. I didn't. I agree with you. I don't think there's anything above. Yeah, you're about the same age. You're yeah. working yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, I thought like, what Piper. Else is there to do? Piper and him had a lot of chemistry. Right. Yeah. And they worked out a plan together. Yeah. And she's trying to win him over, but she comes over to his parents' house and meets the parents and pretends to be the girlfriend. I thought that was far more interesting and, and believable. So I hope she comes right. back too, JB. I mean, you're and, not and the only Piper, one. Piper, you know, going back to Piper, she makes you feel something. When when she yeah. was in his house, I was yeah. like, oh no. You yeah. know, this right. this woman, I was just kind of like, oh, she's she's awesome, but... Yeah. I didn't feel I didn't feel anything towards her. Right. Well, I think that they meant it to be sort of a one episode story arc. Yeah. You know, they had a very like definitive goodbye scene. Right. Um, so for them to kind of conclude everything meant to me that they were just sort of like you know it, she's an interesting character on her own merits that's sort of got her own path that's going to take her in a different direction, which is 
totally fine. Yeah. Um, you know, we've talked about the similarities with Brian, and I kind of go back to the fact that maybe, you know, it is opposites that attract. When mm-hmm. there are two similar people, it's sort of like, you know, we are the same. We, do, we can't really share that much with each other because it's just like talking to the wall almost. <laughs> right. Where, you know. So, talking in the mirror. Exactly. And that, you know, take. Uh, Rebecca or, or some of the other characters that we've seen romantic interest with with Brian and they're so different I mean Rebecca's the perfect example because she's kind of the polar opposite <laughs> of of Brian in a lot of ways and that's why they make such a good match like they sort of balance each other out mm-hmm. um, can we talk about how they went undercover yes we I can have, I love undercover stuff I would love to be an undercover agent maybe I am maybe you are I just, could be I, mean, I, I think you just blew your whole cover <laughs> if, I'm out if it's as bad as You're being out. on the screen yeah I'm on like the podcast Lucy. Like I'm Lucy. on the after buzz TV <laughs> your cover's blown but I just I just love anything with undercover and when it was funny when she was like some people get addicted to being undercover I think that would happen to me if I yeah if I mean I it's it. it's just such a cool th- like to be somebody else in theory it's, it's awesome. cool I mean it's it's cool I'm sure it's lonely <laughs> and there's downsides, and you have to be incredibly intelligent, right? Because you have to figure all this stuff out. Well, but I still and it's also convincing yourself. I mean, if you have, if you're in, I mean, it's one thing to play a character on TV. Yeah, it's completely another to play a character when like your life is on the line. When literally, if you crack, right. you could be killed. Like she's yeah. literally dealing with people with guns, and people that want to kill her, and and people that kill other people like it is a very nasty world that she plays around in every day it as must a be such a such a i mean just to think i mean we see it on tv all the time and you think oh that's cool the actors get to play somebody who's going undercover but there's really people that do that right in yeah. the world yeah it's, it's just fascinating investigating serious crimes maybe that's a great question for our listeners Go ahead, use that hashtag ABTV Limitless. Let us know if you would want to go undercover. I, I, I'm curious because, in my opinion, I'd rather not go undercover. Right. I'd rather really? be me and do what I want to do and have my friends and you know, have, you know, have it all. Have an identity. Life. Yeah, no, have it's, identity. it's yeah. <laughs> as cool as I think it is when I see like Mission Impossible or uh, James Bond. I mean, James Bond kind of keep, keeps born, his like keeps born his whole thing. Like yeah, J- James. Uh, <laughs> Jason, Jason Bourne. Bourne. <laughs> Matt Damon. I mean, it is, we glorify it uh, in entertainment, and it, and it is cool. I mean, it's such, something so, like, high level, it's secretive, it's mysterious. But, you know, the downsides that they don't really show a lot of the time is that you can't really have a life. You can't really have a family. Like, if you're going to be pretending to be other people, right. how do you go home to the same space where people could, you know, just do a easy surveillance and see who's in your home, like who leaves the door. Maybe that's what will happen. Lucy Church will come back. She'll now have a family and be a totally normal person <laughs> because she was exposed. Right. And then, I don't know, she cheats on her husband with Brian. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> well, yeah, very specific who knows? prediction. Yeah. Um, I mean, speaking of, of Lucy Church's, because that brought to my memory how Brian found her in kind of an interesting way, holding up a sign for her to drive by. She's a bit of an insomniac and so she saw it. I guess she doesn't really have a lot of fear because she is a secret agent, but that kind of caught me off guard. If you were driving and you just saw a name, I mean, I've your name. Seen my name on like billboards and stuff, and it's it's not like oh god. You have <laughs> to. That's, that's but, cool. No, uh, well, I mean, JB is is two two letters, so I guess it's uh, a little bit more common. Okay. Um, oh, so not your name, but not JB Zimmerman. No, I think that would be more specific. However, that would be there is a jbzimmerman.com cool. yeah. dot that's been taken. That's not mine. That Who is, uh, it? is angering. Uh, it's some carpenter in like the Midwest. Yeah. Good Check it him. out. What a great yeah, game. right? He got it early. <laughs> I've been after it ever since. Um, but, no, I, I don't know. Lucy Church is kind of a generic name. It's like if you, mm-hmm. like John Smith. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, she's the type of badass that probably wouldn't be phased by someone like Brian holding up a sign. But it still kind of caught me off guard that a secret agent would stop in the, you know, in the middle of the road. Yeah, you would and expose yeah. yourself like that. But I guess it's because it's her real name and no one knows it. So she knew, she must have known that it's her boss or it's Fair someone enough. who who knows her. Right. And it must be important. Or that's just who she is. She's she like I said, she works off impulses. She's like, hmm, what's that? 
and she kind of just goes for it. Yeah, I think there's. I think you're both right. I think there's a way where it, she is hypothetically a highly trained agent who has cut all ties with her previous self, and if people recognized her, I think she'd have the training enough to ignore that and just move on. But I think, Amanda, you know, you're right, too. When you see someone holding up your name, um, or, or JB is right in that, when you see someone holding up your name, you know, it could be distracting enough to get you to stop. Mm-hmm. I mean, either way. You, yeah, I mean, there weren't a lot of people out. It was obviously late at night, so she was kind of just calming down. Mm-hmm. You might be a little curious. Again, you know, she is someone who takes chances and risks. She's oh, yeah. not afraid yeah. to shoot someone in the kneecap. So <laughs> I, I get it. Like, where, again, Brian's not the most intimidating face. Yeah, but again, we are seeing Brian stand by as people are taking violent action around him. He mm. has. Mm led to the death of the evidence tech. He has now um, watched as his partner shot somebody and he's sort of and he's covered for both people. So I think all of this is building for him and I really hope that the next time this comes out, he stops it completely. right. Mm-hmm. Take the gun away from her or you know something or or, in his interactions with Mr. Sands, he needs to have more confidence that, no, it's all taken care of. Um, but he wears his emotions on his sleeves so that we all could tell watching it that he was kind of giving it away that you know, someone might have saw me. Right. You know, mm-hmm. And um, the Rebecca, you, you'll notice the difference when he talks about Rebecca as opposed to the evidence tech a couple episodes ago. He's much more solid about being forceful that re- you don't have to worry about Rebecca. She's fine. She's not a concern. Right. And then we see Mr. Sands and her meet, which I thought was a really, really interesting part about this episode. Yeah, great scene. Yes, definitely very interesting. Let's um, talk about that real quick. I want to finish up with uh, Brian because you mentioned his confidence and that we saw him for the kind of the first time since for a while, mm-hmm. I would say, that he was working without NCT. Um, in a large capacity, like he had days of operating without it. Um, so that was interesting to see that he was really affected by it. Obviously, we know how he's not going to be as smart, but in terms of his other personality aspects, he wasn't really as confident. He kind of didn't really know what he was doing when he was, uh, you know, playing that that internet repair man. Yeah. You know, he could he couldn't even he knew what he was trying to do, like by finding the the label, the name on the label. Mm -hmm. But he it took him forever to actually like see it. Like it wasn't even like he could physically grasp doing that action even. So it was interesting to see like how he is again like kind of a barometer of like, okay, where who is Brian San, like without it? Yeah, um, and it was interesting. So I don't know if he's yeah being affected by by NZT and just like he has a massive handicap now that he can't have it sometimes, or maybe I just forgot like how sort of inept Brian. Uh, the character is without it. I mean, uh, everybody knows how to set up a router, right? Yeah. You get the router, you plug but it one in, and you plug time. it, and you plug it back. But he in. was yeah. buying time. But there's a lot of ways you can buy time without having all the cords around your neck and, right. and not knowing what to do. I mean, you plug one end in, you plug the other in, and oh, let me check the server room, and you know, you kind of move around a little bit. I thought, given the given the history we have seen on this show of how creative they can be at problem solving and mm-hmm. putting all these diagrams together and I thought that lacked a little bit of the creative juice that we've seen so far in dealing with some of these other cases of the week that we see. But he wasn't on NCT, so it wasn't going to be as creative. <laughs> That's true. I'm just that, saying, he's buying true. time. Yeah, very that true. That didn't bother me. I kind of liked it. I was like, oh, yeah, Brian. Good to see you again. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of liked it. Maybe okay. that is a, a reason why they chose something a little bit more simple. I mean, yeah. in your Ethernet, uh, <laughs> like... yeah. Literally has two plugs, the power and the internet <laughs> cord. Like, it's really not that complicated. And you, you could be just like, most IT guys are like, hmm, I don't know. Did you try turning it off? <laughs> yeah, did you try did you turning unplug it on? It? Yeah. Did, you did you plug it back in? Yeah, you I mean, there's, there's a lot of things you could do to just be that IT guy. Right. So, 
try hit Google again. You know, yeah. like that kind of stuff. But no, I, I just wanted to reference that, uh, Frank. Um, I think you were really onto something with bringing up the confidence. Even the character that was in um, in that office mentioned, like, oh, yeah, if we can just get someone that's a little bit more confident. Yeah. Uh, that'd be great. And she like kind of shied into the phone um, to call the company. Wasn't she an interesting character? Yeah. I thought she was that great. Girl. I have the actress's name here. Lauren Blumenfeld. Uh, she was the Edelweiss receptionist. She yeah, was she, was, she, was, she was great. I mean, only in it for a split second, but like again, we got so much from her not even saying anything. Her facial expressions. Yeah, yeah so you like... She was a great character faces. actress. So I funny. loved her. Yeah. And it's crazy you remember her. Yeah, she had you know very memorable. four lines, very yeah. memorable performance. Good and job. It was just yeah, one scene. What was Bravo. Her, name, again? her Bravo. name was Lauren Blumenfeld. Good job, Lauren. Nice. Um, but yes, let's move into the real meat of this episode: uh, the Rebecca Sands storyline. Yeah, um, so good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is what's keeping the show going and keeping me coming back week to week watching. Mm-hmm. It, and I think there's so much to these stories that I want to see. An episode dedicated just to Rebecca's father. And we finally saw something again in the picture um, when Sands is discussing at the end of the episode with his uh, tech yeah, his bugger, associate, right. you know, bugger guy who bugged Rebecca's apartment. There is so much that has yet to be tapped with our serialized elements of the show. You know, what happened with Rebecca's dad, um, Rebecca's offer with, you know, the same, uh, with the moral organization. That could have been a, a wonderful episode unto itself with Rebecca asking herself these serious questions. Um, if someone came to you right now and said, hey, I'll pay you $20 million a year to go host a, a after show in right. Helena, Montana, <laughs> and you got to live there year-round, would you do it? I would do it. I'd go if someone gave me twenty million a year to go do that. So I think everybody has their price, right? And I would have liked to see how much she was offered. I was just about to say that. Sorry, I'm. Sorry. Yes, I'm very it's curious. But I hate when they do that. They do that in movies all the time. Until yes. it shows the napkin. Yeah. <laughs> where you're just kind of supposed to guess yeah. what it is. Yeah. In Moneyball, they did it where Brad Pitt gets the offer to, right. to yeah. be the Boston resident. Yeah, and they GM. still don't and even still say. Don't know. There's they like, well, know. this they makes you the so highest They do it so you just pay. imagine. Because like, I feel like for yeah. every person who's watching the movie, too, they have a different number that would actually right. be like a lot to them. So well, it's it, like you kind of just get, you know. Totally. I mean, for entertainment, um, I think it's, it's very dating for them to put an actual number on there because of yeah. inflation goes up um, pretty quickly, exactly. relatively. I mean, um, you look at movie, like Austin Powers, I think, is, is the best example where Dr. Evil comes back and he's like holding the world ransom for a million dollars. And they're like, uh, <laughs> yeah. maybe want to add a little bit more. A couple, yeah. couple more zeros. <laughs> but it's, it always bothers me when they do that. But would you go? So I'm, like, what? I'm like, how much? Exactly, though. Is it is it $20 million or is yeah. it like... Four hundred grand. What would be like, your what price, is it? Amanda? Well, if, if if I offer you, I said, you know, Amanda, you can. I need you to move to South Dakota so you can go and host the Limitless After Show from now on. South Dakota, huh? South Dakota, and you what have to live there year round. I mean, if I offered you twenty million a year to do it, would you do it? Absolutely. See, so I mean, everybody has. Absolutely. Would you do it? Yeah, I do yeah. just about anything for twenty million dollars <laughs> right. a year. Right. That's like the Powerball money. Right, so I mean, I'm just yeah. assuming that's what they offered her. Who, who right. knows if it's if it's true or not? But we saw very little of her struggle to decide. We saw a scene mm-hmm. with Sands and her at the bar, uh, with him making his offer, and then we cut to the scene where she rejects him and right. talks about how I know about you and I'm coming after you, which I thought was a little bit heavy-handed. I thought she could have been a, a little bit more subtle about the way that she's going to pursue this because now she has basically declared war on the Moore organization. She has put Sands in an incredibly defensive position to where now he's in the corner where he has to consider eliminating her. And we saw at the end of the episode he gives the okay if there is the window of opportunity. And I think the only right. reason that he's held off so far is because he knows what that'll do to Brian. Uh, but now it's just because she's become so much of a danger, partly through her own action in rejecting the job offer in a unsophisticated way. That now she's in she's in Pretty real trouble. Pretty blatant, yeah. She was blatant about it, and I think she could have been. I really appreciate that, ate the offer, and I respect what you do. But 
I really like what I do, and and that could have been it, and, mm -hmm. and, and, or something. I mean, the writers are far more creative right. than I, but you know, just a little little hint that I kind of know what's coming. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, I, it was very interesting how undiplomatic she was at the exactly. end. I mean, especially yeah. since we didn't really see her process throughout the episode. Uh, again, I agree with you, Frank. I would have loved to see so her. You know, grapple with this idea yeah. of working with Sans, like doing the uncovering and the detecting that she does to kind of figure out like who he really is, like uh, that he was from MI6 and yeah. and and that whole world. Like figuring that out would be, would have been a cool storyline to to go parallel with with Brian. That's a great point, and she. And the reason being why I say I want to see her struggle with it, because she doesn't reject it when she gets the offer right away. And she takes time to consider it. So if you're going to take time to consider it and come back for a second meeting, it would have been nice to see the, right. the struggle. I mean, or see, yeah, agree? see the internal struggle. But also yeah. I love that she didn't, the reason we didn't see the inter internal struggle is because I do think that she knew she wasn't going to take it from the beginning and she yeah. was trying to figure out what to say to him. Right. Because I feel like her, that's the one thing that I do love about her and Brian is they always stay true to their morals. They always know what they want. True, In true. the end. So I don't think she had really that big of an internal struggle. I think she was just trying to decide what she was going to say, and what she did end up saying was a little bit aggressive. Right. Great point. I mean, I, I, I can definitely see where Rebecca's character is sort of a, like a no BS person. Like, yeah. she's mm -hmm. just straight up, straight shooter. You know, she is what she's about, and she's not what she's not. You know, I, I I respect that a lot. That you I just, and she knows that this Eddie Mora Foundation is not or organization is right. not okay. I mean, she's been very outspoken in in sort of her beliefs on on certain things and how she feels. She um, goes, I get the bad guys. That's kind of my thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, Which to to her at the core. I mean, I think that I, I again, I would love to hear more about her dad's backstory. Yeah. So we can figure out like where she gets all this. I mm -hmm. think you can dedicate two episodes to that. I think you can. You at least, well, I, I hope that season two, I mean, again, we can, we have many more episodes this uh, back half of the season, but I really want them to start getting deeper into that. There's so much that we keep talking about. Yeah. And um, I'd love to see Brian's father again, too. I was yes. just going to say that. It, you stole the words. You, <laughs> well, you did right that too. My mind, mind reader. So and now, I did it back mind to you. Reader. Done. Circle. <laughs> Circle, guys. But, but you're right. But remember, we had that great scene between Na Naz and um, Finch Sr., uh, on the bench there, and Brian hasn't really been in danger so far where Brian's dad would need to step in. And I think there's these, th the show has set up these wonderful ideas between the main characters and uh, Boyle's, you know, uh, military past coming back and, and bringing up to him. I think there's a lot that could be explored there. And um, we're sort of sacrificing those elements to have this case of the week, which I, I guess is a, I, I understand it. It's the format of the show, but uh, my point being that I think there's so many interesting parts about these characters that are going unexplored right now. Mm -hmm. um, so as a fan, I'm just I'm digging. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you know we see more from. I think they do it on purpose. On these episodes, so you right. watch more. Exactly. No, they have definitely. 22 I mean, episodes. They lot. have they have <laughs> content for days. I mean, <laughs> they they. Put Played with a, a different style this yeah. episode. Mm -hmm. um, it was sort of, you know, obviously Brian is, is not with the, the main team, but they had a very, like, this interview style was half, um, you know, like HBO The Jinx and yeah. half yeah. The Office. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was interesting because this is sort of a, a comedic action show. Mm hmm. To see how they play with this kind of docu style, uh, or, show. yeah, fake docu style reality show. Mm -hmm. um, they even got kind of meta with it when they were joking about reality TV in general, with the uh, the Russian escort yeah. uh, being obsessed about it. <laughs> yeah, which was great at the end. Right. When she was talking about the bachelors, <laughs> yeah. I mean, when she was talking about the housewives. Yeah, the housewives. Uh, she talked about the, the MythBusters the myth last season. It is very sad. I'm upset. It's a good show. It's quality programming. Um, but yeah, it was just it was interesting how they kind of reinvent themselves this um, as a show. Mm -hmm. Not completely. It's not like they're rewriting the wheel, but even when the show kind of takes uh, a turn away from the the main story arc, 
um, which obviously we always want more of. Right. It's it keeps it fresh in a different way. Like this, you know, I think this is one of those episodes that could have played in multiple places um, in in the season, mm-hmm. but you know, it's an interesting experiment in that type of storytelling. Um, and, and we talked about when we had um, Josh over here, one of the directors of the episodes, how quickly they kind of come in and out. You know, they have, to get all these episodes done, they have, you know, different production teams come in. And so it's, it's interesting to see the different styles of the show. I mean, it is still the same core show, but with a completely different flavor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's one thing that's interesting about network television. Yes, you have a different director for every show. Well, yeah, but I mean, not, not yeah, not not yeah. all uh, network TV is. Uh, you know, with how many they need to shoot on on the time schedule, it it only makes sense that you need a bigger uh, sort of directing pool and production pool mm-hmm. um, to get everything done. I mean, there's so many episodes. This is there's no time in television. There is there's no, no time. time. <laughs> Never. Never any time. Insane. <laughs> um, but with that said, shall we go? Ooh, um, let's talk about Sands. But I, I want to segue that into predictions because uh, that's where all of my predictions are. Okay. <laughs> and now you're after Buzz TV predictions. Did you, did you just say Sands? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. So creepy. I, I thought it was part of the drop. Okay, the fir- one of the first shows I did. For After Buzz was around Halloween time, uh-huh. and so when this came out, I you thought, just it, thought was, it was like I festive. thought it was a Halloween thing, <laughs> yeah. and then it keeps happening. Yes, so it it's does. Not a Halloween it does. Thing. It's a Valentine's Day thing now. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> or a President's Day thing. Soon it will be. What's the next holiday? I don't even know. Good for Easter. Easter, nice. Well, my birthday. That's well, that's a birthday. national. That's a national holiday. That's a national <laughs> yeah, exactly. Holiday. That's a, that's international. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's like global. Okay, can I um, anyway, yeah. So, yeah. Do you have? Do you have? My one? biggest prediction is I think that with Rebecca and this window of opportunity and how they're going to end up almost wanting to get rid of her or dispose of her, that that is going to be the moment when Brian's father has to come in. When Brian, he's going to get to a point where he doesn't know what to do, and it maybe it'll be some type of cliffhanger where they're about to kill her or they're about to really mess things up, and that's the time he has to go to his dad and say, "Dad, I need to, I need you to help me." Right. And it's kind of, it'll become a family, a family affair. That's great. Nice. That's I like that prediction my, a lot. I know I came up with that Bring the we fam back. The Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> my prediction is that I think Rebecca is going to learn that her apartment is being bugged hmm. and that the connection between her dad and the guy who did the bugging, I'm sorry we don't have the character's name just yet, but... Um, uh, is going to lead her to learn more about the Mora organization. Uh, Sands says to his tech there that you knew her father, um, so obviously there w- there is some sort of connection there. So I'm going to make a bold prediction and say that she's going to figure it out. She's figured everything out so far uh, with scant clues and seems to be smart enough to figure out that if her apartment is being bugged, she is someone who's going to realize it. Hmm. Uh, the, it may not happen right away. We've got seven episodes left here before the end of the season, but I think at some point she will figure it out, and it'll it'll only heighten the tension and her knowledge and uh, and her wherewithal to go after the more organization. Right. right. I think it's going to happen right away. I think she's going to notice this coming episode. Okay. This coming Tuesday, she's going to find it. Um, you know, it might be a little, like, into the middle of the episode. But I think because of that, she's going to go direct to Sans. I mean, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. She called him out. Yep. He obviously didn't <laughs> play his poker face as best he could. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now everything's out in the open. And I think that... She's going to be very aware. Her eyes are sort of open to the fact that she revealed she's not going to be working for Eddie Mora. Mm-hmm. Obviously, consequences could could be coming. And she's going to have her head on a swivel. I think that Sands is going to be checking up on her. You know, we, we saw him kind of drop a hint to that guy that, you know, if, if there is an assassination window, you can take it. Yeah. Um, See, that's the thing. She has to be careful, though, and they can't go too aggressive with right. her, or else he's just going to kill her. 
True, but uh, Rebecca but is is not. savvy enough where she can thwart an assassination attempt. I'm pretty sure. And maybe he'll do a few things where he kind of tricks her, and, like he did to Brian, where like the the nurse for his father right. was like someone from them. Well, maybe yeah, he'll I, do some type of like mind mind messing. Ooh, with. mind messing. Fair enough. Uh, they can grab one of those robots from last episode. Um, we know, I think maybe if, if there is like sort of a botched assassination attempt, that will lead her to find the bugs or something. And that will, she just needs like a tiny little push to check the apartment. Yep. And mm-hmm. she knows like, oh, it's probably textbook in the like electrical outlets. Right. Um, so I think she's she's a very smart character. We've talked about that a ton. Uh, she's going to figure it out very soon, and I think she's going to go right after Sands. Maybe get him into custody, but not have enough to like for him to be gone. I think he's going to get away. If that that's happens, my... that's going to be even worse for Rebecca. If they get mm-hmm. him, but they don't really get him, that's going to be even worse. Right. And then Eddie Mara is going to have to come back. Yes, Which that's what good. I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping yeah. for. And then we can have like more of a, a Brian square off with with Eddie. Not not like a final showdown, but something to alleviate the the current path we're on, which is you know sort of like us or them, uh, Team Mora or Team FBI and Rebecca. Yeah, mm-hmm. I could see Brian trying to recruit Rebecca once he finds out that they offered her a job. Like, hey, you know, you could come. Well, no, because then he would give away his cover, right? So, no. never mind. I take it back. <laughs> you can't take back prediction. Oh, yes, I can. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, well, I think that does it for me. Do you guys have anything to, to add until next no, week? No, just excited for next week. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, we will see you guys soon. Till then, where can the people find you guys, Frank? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Let's Go Frank M. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at AmandaFTA31. Awesome. And you guys can find me, JB, at Hey John Blake. Hey John Blake. See you guys Blake. later. Thank you. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 